So welcome to the first spoiler cast that we're ever doing. Um, this is going to be a spoiler cast on Darling and the Franks, so spoiler warning already. If you don't want being spoiled on Darling and the Franks, why are you even here? It says it in the title that it's a spoiler cast. So this is your final I was, warning. I was, I was about to say, I'm glad you said that because I was genuinely about to turn around and be like, why the fuck would anyone yeah. click on I mean, if you're, if you're still says, here and you don't want spoiler spoilers for cast. Darling and the Franks, are you Darling stupid? In the like, <laughs> We're doing a spoiler cast on Darling in the Franks. If you don't want spoilers, please leave now. To be fair, YouTube might have been kind enough to autoplay after the previous video. Yeah, exactly. I'm just... I, I, you always do it because then people go, oh, you just bought this for me. And, but that implies anyone I yeah. actually cared about so, was enough to watch um, the last one. We yeah. will... Up to the most recent episode that has aired, which is... Episode 20? Yes. No, 21, I think. 20. Is it 20? Seems an odd point for a spoiler cast when so close to the end of a series, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, hell, we'll tell you why! Yeah, spoilers! <laughs> um, so yeah, so we'll just immediately go with the first, the big spoiler. Episode 20 is where it does the t trigger thing, or the Gynax thing, which is literally... Oh. Aliens! Oh, we're oh shit, we're diving in balls deep. Yeah. Not even mm. No, not even there we go. Like, uh, the people even... who didn't listen, oh. just bam, the spoiler's just there. Just just not even teasing the clit a little bit no. not even just pushing the head in first we've just gone full thrust balls deep and mm -hmm. okay so um yeah no shit gets real in the second half of the show because it's trigger and of course trigger is a, is a company that spawned from gynax and they their stories tend to have this thing of the enemy that you think you have in the first half isn't really the real enemy and it is in fact some well, 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 before, before we dive full on into this fucking dry hump started, mm. let's, let's start at the beginning. Should we, yes. should we discuss the first four episodes before, like, as we said, because oh, the first think, four episodes I think, I think, feel very different to the rest of the show. I think we should discuss a very simple thing at the start, and that's the actual base premise of the show. Okay. Go ahead, Ben. What is the base premise of the show when you've so only base, seen memes? <laughs> the base premise of the show is that basically there's a bunch of really fucked up kids who will get into more about their actual nature of them later. Uh, forced to grab onto steering wheels attached to women or the female fucked up kids. Okay. So, in order to so <laughs> what, Ben? Max in order to fight giant blue glowy dinosaurs that are being sent out because some old pervert that is introduced by literally grabbing the ass of a young attractive assistant um, tells them to and so of course he couldn't possibly Actually, have Actually he doesn't tell them on. to it's somebody else Oh 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 do, 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 bo, bo, bo. It's and Ape then... tells them to do it that is just Dr. Franks who is under the thumb of Ape because he he, he is smart and he made Franks's well, he can be on the. He, he invented the robots, basically. I was trying to think of a joke about him only having thumb, you know. He has one uh, thumb and one metal thumb. Uh, well, yeah. Anyway, they they pilot and they fight these giant blue dinosaurs called Klaxosaurs, so we're in, and uh, basically kill them and destroy the orb in the center of them to destroy them and protect humanity. What? what? Hmm. Um, and then this uh, strange monster girl comes along who's half Klaxus or half uh, human called Zero Two because she's the second. Well they all and... all the all the kids basically all the kids get code numbers and And everyone's that's piloted with her has basically died and suffered severe injuries. After piloting three times with them. And the, because you know, third time's the charm. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so she she, I don't know why I specified boys there. I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, so then she... Thing, another pilot dies while going with her, and then stereotypical, bland, I can't do shit all MC decides to climb in the mech and grab her ass and actually be good at the thing. Yeah. Um, but before that, of course, they meet before that happens in... While she's swimming in the river naked and captures a fish with her mouth... Man, um, it's a fucking spoiler cast, and we're still explaining it scene by scene. Yeah, no, but <laughs> but no, that's the main the main meeting, and the first thing she says to him is, um, isn't she is... said like, oh, oh, my darling, or something? Like she literally just goes, 
Are you my oh. darling or something? I can't remember. I think she does say, are you my darling? She says something. something along the lines of, are you my darling or something. Um, which is important. <laughs> but she's too busy with that fucking gookie. Yeah. So, yeah, so the beginning of the show very much looks like this weird perverted thing because you just get this thing. Obviously, you've got mechs and they can only be piloted in pairs, male, female pairs. The female is in the on all fours position with the guy behind them grabbing onto handlebars that are attached to the girl's bum. Okay. It's a studio trigger show. The people yeah. Um, <laughs> and, of course, the lines that happen with it, especially, I think, in episode four, where the yeah. lines of when Hero finally pilots a Zero Two properly um, goes, this feels so good, I can feel myself going inside of you. <laughs> Yeah. And lines like that. Once you get past Man. that bit, the show actually gets quite interesting. Um, but and what is a, he a guy that got turned into a fucking onsen? I mean, whew. now, I mean, for me, for me, <laughs> now that's such a specific meme. <laughs> that's. <laughs> I even I don't get this. Oh, God. It's one that Alistair brought up earlier, and it's so overtly stupid. What? <laughs> what? I, when you uh, when you said that he uh, he says uh, that like oh it feels so good I could feel you going inside me it's like oh what is he an onsen like a guy that's turned uh, into an onsen oh whoa oh god yeah that was great then um, <laughs> basic basically there's a title of a light novel that's like what what is it wrong to be a guy who has been turned into an onsen, and it's not like I like feeling inside you or anything. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, 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 and I learned this today, and I just need to outwardsly say this to people, that this thing exists, and I think we should all give it the appreciation it deserves so it comes up on that dartboard light novel translation into anime next season. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, so, I'm just gonna... Let's, let, let's just discuss positives and negatives about the show, really. Um, my favourite part about the show at this point now is, and probably the only reason I'm still watching this thing, is Hero and Zero Two's relationship. Yeah, because they that pairing could have easily have been the biggest contender for best pairing of the year, and if not Man. one of the best pairings I've ever seen in anime. Like that couple uh, is yeah, amazing. I've, I've, not seen, I've not seen quite a good pairing since Stale Toast and Clickbait. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure. I don't there. even get that. What? <laughs> well, because Hero, until like 13 episodes in, has the personality of a Danny DeVito cardboard cutout. And, <laughs> and Zero Two is essentially a gl wank factory for 90% of the audience. Hmm. Yeah. Well, okay, let's get to that point. Episode 13. Is the back? Well, well, oh, well, 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 should we just skip it? Right. But wait, but wait. Surely the best part of the anime is the reveal of the information. You know. Oh, you're right. Episodes three to four. So zero two really like thing. Like, like she really likes sweet things. <laughs> what was... And so you, you get about two episodes worth of eating things covered in honey with her bare hands to to the main character because. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> so yeah no so basically what happens the first the first the first section of the show is basically will hero be able to survive piloting with zero two um of course there's a bunch of other characters in the show um all the other like kids in the squad and it's very obvious quite early on this squad is different to all the other squads uh the kids act differently, they're treated differently and well, so Well yeah, on. I mean you look at it and you see things that you don't see elsewhere like Well uh, or for like example say, all the but... kids have names which the other kids don't. Yeah, and obviously the the most standout part they've got an obviously gay member, Mitsuru. Well Mitsuru here is we go. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> 
So the first the first thing is is this is the thing that I don't particularly agree with the show is first of all they paint Mitsuru as the complete dickhead at the start of the show. Like he is you're meant to hate him. Literally, that, the show is designed for you to hate that guy. I know, then again, it does feel... It, is it, or is it the trigger thing of... Because I I didn't really like Shimon in Gurren Lagann that much. I was always a big, like, dick-up cameo boy. And then... And then stuff happens, and then you, you kind of you kind of get, get cameo taken away and Shira, uh, Shimon shoved down, shoved down your throat. And I feel like it's a similar situation of... I don't know whether it's following the same sort of formulas per se or such, but uh, I, it does very know. much feel like you're given one character that's overtly better than another, and then suddenly you've got the one that's worse shoved down your throat. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's um, uh, well anyway. Like so, basically, the f- first thing that happens, hero pilots a zero two, and Mitsuru's like, what? Well, he's he has the attitude. That hero is useless, and he's like, "Oh, if that idiot can pilot with her, of course, so can I." So he tries to pilot with her, and ends up basically almost exhausting himself to the point of illness. And it's obvious that if he tried to keep piloting with Zero Two, he would die. Wait, when uh, the fuck does this happen? He pilots. <laughs> he, he, Mitsuru Mitsuru pilots with Zero Two once because mm-hmm. um, there's a thing that happens where. Um, he gets frustrated with his partner. Yeah, no, he gets uh, what well, he gets frustrated with his partner. So the other three couples, what well, couples? Uh, partners. Who was his original partner? Ikono. Lesbian girl. Uh, Les- uh, Lesbi friends. Lesbi friends. <laughs> yeah, uh, no. Wet noodle. So, so the other th- <laughs> the other three partnerships, Ichigo and Goro, um, Kokoro and Futoshi. And Twin Tails and other guy who I can't remember the name of because they barely have any character uh, moments. Sorry, can we just take a moment to appreciate Goro? Yeah, yeah we, we will. We, we just, will get to uh, go, bro. Like, can we all just give him like just yes, uh, yes, just like a uh, come on round of applause for Go, bro. <laughs> we will get to that. We will get to that. Best bro. Uh, anyway, so they go off to do a mission. They get into trouble, so yes. they decide to stay and send uh, Strelitzia. Well, Str- Zero Two offers to go, and Hero offers to go with her. At this point, Hero is not recognized as a, an official um, parasite, i.e., pilot. So he can't go. Mama. That always means the people you're working for are great when they call their most precious resource parasites. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so so Mitsuru offers to go instead. Uh, which point Zero Two jokingly goes like, "Okay, fine if you think you can handle it." Um, uh, and he goes off. And he s- believes he can do it, but then he overdoes it, and Zero Two literally proves it to him that he's being like overdoes it, and Zero Two overextends herself to the point of like trying to make him suffer even more, um, and he gets affected by it by it massively. Um, on this point, uh, man, I don't, I don't actually remember any of this happening, but. Yeah, no, it, ha- it they... happens. You know, because the thing is, after that happens, he, he, he you can see him taking me- medicine and to recover. It takes him a while to recover from it. All I can say is that this makes me like Zero Two even. Yeah, no, Zero Two is great. I... Um, so what happens after that? So yeah, so then then it comes into a thing of hero pilots with Zero Two one more time, and they rec- they they allow them to pilot together. Of course, the f- then there's this massive attack that happens on the plantation, so the place where they're living. Oh, oh, oh that's symbolism and a half, isn't it? Can we just skip over that? What? <laughs> should, should, are we just are we just gonna glide over back to the place where where these people that are held against their will, told they're not allowed to breathe, not allowed to love, not allowed to do whatever they want unless the the man tells them to, it's and then are forced yeah. to go out and work Ooh. and do things for them and risk their lives and possibly die doing so. Yes, it's called the, the plantation. plantation. Yeah, 
<laughs> so yeah, the plantation gets is gets attacked, and that's that's Hero and Zero Two's uh, third they, piloting next week time. They hit the cotton farm. Um, <laughs> at which point, Hero actually nearly dies, uh, but he doesn't. He powers through. Uh, and at which point, because he hasn't died, he then gets officially appointed as Zero Two's permanent partner because he's the only one who can actually pilot with her without dying. Um, even though oh, he can't pilot with anybody else. Um, so, continues on. There's a bunch of slice of life episodes where uh, relationships grow, blah, blah. Um, oh. More and more, Mixru oh. is not think... able to pilot with his partner. And then comes the first controversial episode. Oh, no, no, no. I think we're skipping over some joyous moments in this What, show. you mean the swimsuit episode? I think we're skipping over such beautiful moments and such beautiful ma- maims. Some beautiful memes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> why, why are your memes before the partner swap episode, well, Ben? Well, we've got, we've got, we've got everyone's favourite, everyone's favourite big, sad, cry grill because, oh shit, look at them stars. That was the swimsuit episode. Okay, so swimsuit oh, episode... Oh, it's a shooting star! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a swimsuit episode. Nothing really important happened there, uh, happens there. Apart from the fact that Kokoro finds a book yeah. that is, ty- is, is describes how babies are made. No one cares about the book. Can we go back it's to important. the book? Everyone <laughs> cares about the book. is important, Ben. Why aren't we shitting on Sad Girl? Anyway, so at this point, you get to realize that Hero loves Zero too, Ichigo loves Hero, and Goro loves Ichigo. So we've got that thing happening. Um, at this moment, you're getting this also, even though Zero Two and Hero are best couple. You're getting the background thing of seeing Kokoro and F- Futoshi being really cute and adorable together. At which point, everybody's second best couple. So we like that. We like that being they're being adorable and trying to copy Zero Two. And oh Hero. yeah, because That's... they promised that they would. Pilot yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. And then, and then we get to the fun <laughs> bit, which is um, episode eleven, which is they go. Which is where 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 Ichigo cries and everyone's happy. <laughs> uh, no, that doesn't happen in episode. I don't think. Anyway. Episode 11 is the episode where the meme darling and the thought came from. Um, <laughs> which is the episode literally starts with Futoshi and Kokoro have, make, uh, talking adorably in the, in the Franks and going like, we, we make great partners, don't we? Will you promise to always be with me? To which Kokoro replies, yes, I promise to always be with you and partner with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, then comes the meeting inside uh, the thing where they go, okay, we've got a problem. Mitsuru and Ikano cannot pilot together. Now, we won't force you to do this, but <laughs> but we, we, we're going to suggest a partner shuffle. So if anybody would like to try and pilot with somebody else, now's the time to say. Ikano suggests she, she wants to try and do a girl-on-girl partnership with... Um, uh, Ichigo, Ichigo. Okay. and Kokoro nervously puts her hands up and says, "I want to try and partner with Mitsuru." At which point, everybody goes, "Fuck you, you fucking fart, go away!" <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that happens. So yeah, Kokoro is in love with Mitsuru by the looks of it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, that's episode eleven essentially. And at which point, those partnerships eventually go into the point of. Um, <laughs> Uh, Kokoro stays with Mitsuru and Futoshi is, has to pilot with Ikano and the partnership stay for, like that for the rest of the show um, which is why more people hate Mitsuru this is one of the first problems I had with the show the fact that at the start they literally say they literally make you think Mitsuru is a dickhead and you hate him and they give you the adorable couple of Futoshi and Kokoro and then they just go like oh no we're giving the girl you like who's with the guy you want her to be with oh no and sticking her with the dickhead it's, it's almost like they make you want to feel emotions. It's literally, it literally becomes darling in the thought, or like darling in the NTR, or whatever. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, that was. <laughs> I love how Ben. If you, <laughs> this is an audio <laughs> podcast, so you guys can't see this. But Ben is literally posting memes into the Discord chat. Oh, <laughs> into the Discord no, chat. Sure. The last one is my favorite one. It's literally a screenshot of Coco 
putting a hand up saying, let me try riding with Mitsuru, and it's just a little clip of just tags, Neo Tear, cheating. Yeah. <laughs> so NTR or and cheating, net, yeah. Net, net, netorare. <laughs> net, netorare. Net... Yeah. No. It's, yeah. Um. Anyway, can we... Uh, yeah, so there's... A, there's a, at some point, there's also another episode around that time where Goro um, has a wonderful sacrificial moment where he gets trapped, he's going to get trapped inside a um, a Klaxosaur and he last minute pushes the button that ejects Ichigo out in an escape pod. Uh, Of course, knowing that that will strand him because, of course, he can't pilot uh, Franks on his own. Uh, But because, of course... He loves her, get... and he's best bro, and he tells it. Please get another round of applause for Goro. <laughs> oh, round of applause yeah, for. Let's, let's get another one for Gobro. <laughs> Come on, Gobro. <laughs> yes. No. He is. He is best. He is best bro. Um. Yeah. So he has a wonderful moment. Ichigo goes to rescue him. Um. Which is actually a great episode. Of course, at the end of it, he confesses to her, to which she doesn't really reply. <laughs> Um, mm. Yeah, um, I've seen. To, I've been talking a lot. Does anybody want to add to anything to what I've been saying so far? <laughs> I love how I'm literally just going through the entire plot of the bloody show right now. Everybody should know mm. the plot. Why? Why am I discussing I mean, the plot? Everyone watching this does know the plot, mate. Yeah. Why am I going through the plot? <laughs> everybody knows the bloody plot. Um, let's 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 move this along. <laughs> So, I mean, there's also mechs involved with the show that no one ever talks about. Yeah, <laughs> no well, that's because they the barely mechs. show the up. Work well. <laughs> like, the mechs are good. Yeah, but it's like, it's... Any... The, my my favourite part... Let's let's just talk about favourite parts of the show. My favourite part of the show is episode 13 and episode 15. Episode 13 being the... the, um, f- the, the flashback episode where they go back to... The backstory between Hero and Zero Two, where they've actually hmm. met before as kids, but Hero can't remember because he's had his memory wiped, and it's an adorable, that adorable thing of like he sees that this girl is in trouble, even though she is red and has horns and is obviously not human. He just sees this girl who's in trouble, and he's already doubting things that are going on, and he just and he just feels like I I need to get her out of here. To which point he tries to escape with her. Of course, it doesn't work. But yeah. and it's this adorable thing where Zero Two up to this point couldn't talk either. The only thing she had was this book that she'd been given to by someone, which was the story of a what was it a monster who wants to marry this prince. So she asks to get turned into a human to marry mm-hmm. the prince. They get married, but then something happens sad and they die or something. Um, but she, that's the only thing she knows, and that book kind of connects the two of them, and that's yeah. why she calls Hero Darling, is because Darling is the word used in the book, and so Z- Hero gives Zero Two the name, her name of Zero Two, which is hmm. it's literally the first thing she learns. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the memes that are being posted in chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, no, I just love that episode. Every, everyone, it's great. I promise, I will post a link to some of these in the actual yeah. comments. Actually, to video. be honest, just yeah, just look up "Darling" in the Frank's memes. They're just everywhere. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh my God. Uh, I'm posting some. Of, I will post these in the comments of the video or the description, possibly. Yes. <laughs> oh God. Um. But no, I I really love that episode, and yeah. um, it just and it's the moment at the end of the episode because Zero Two at this moment is fed up. Like she's fed up of the the fact that Hero can't remember this, and mm-hmm. at which point at the end of the episode when he just turns around and looks at her and it's like, "You're the girl with the book," and they just real and it's just this moment of, "Oh my god!" And that's when the characters become like best couple. Like, that is when you're just like, oh, you just want these two to be together, and just like, it's great. And then, of course, episode 14 happens, and then everybody hates Ichigo because she tries to pull them apart. 
Right, and she doesn't know the background of them, but... uh, I don't know what you're on about. The best episode with the best couple is clearly the moment where the gay guy just bangs the fucking rando bitch thought. And then, you know... Oh yeah, we'll get get to that. So episode 15 is great. They both get an incredibly unhappy ending that's deserved because they're both piece of shit human beings. Yeah. I... (laughs) So, yeah, and then episode 15 is great. Um, least favourite part of the episode is literally what Ben is just talking about. It's the thing that happens after episode 15 of the whole Kukuro and Mitsuru relationship thing. I think it's rushed, stupid, and dumb. It's fine he's um, cut his hair so he's no longer... Yeah, right? he's cut his hair. He's not the... um, it's stupid. It literally goes from one thing being like, I'm cutting your hair, to I want to have a baby with you, to let's get married. To I'm I mean, now to fucking fair, pregnant. To be, fair, to be fair, he's pretty damn fucking fabulous. Why wouldn't that that as your your like baby father? Mm. <sighs> like, no, to I, be honest, no, were, no, no, no. If no, you were picking this... anyone in the show and you wanted your baby to be like the most fabulous fuck, like like you want close to Gilgamesh tier, but there ain't no fucking Gilgamesh around. Y- you're going for Mitsuru. Let's be no, honest. No, you go for Go, bro. Why would you go for Go, bro? Your because he's gonna... a bro, and he'd be a great dad. Yeah, your son's gonna fucking come out bro fisting everyone and turn into PewDiePie. <laughs> I would say they're both, they're both human, and it's a very extreme situation, and that's why everything happens so quickly. Just no. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. No. Rationalizing. I mean, work, to, be, to be honest, to be honest, the, the the saddest moment <laughs> of that whole that whole sequence of episodes is the moment where Zero Two says, "I can't have children," and I'm just like, "No, they would never have a family together." But yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, to me, it, to me, the show kind of goes downhill after episode fifteen. I just, I well, just... mainly because half of the characters basically stop existing. It's. It's like not this... not in a literal sense. They don't kill off any of the characters. Like half mm. of the characters just stop. You know. Yeah, I I I'm still expect. I'm still in, waiting in for somebody to, to die. Like they I'm still waiting. For just, some... They genuinely get like two lines a show because I feel that the voice actors argued that they want a speaking line and they want a paycheck for this episode, and so they think if we're paying them for this episode, then we may as well give them some yeah. fucking voice lines. I mean, the only the only good th- like Ikono gets her thing where she confesses to uh, Ichigo. And she slaps one of the freaking nines. Oh, we haven't even talked about the nines yet. The... I don't really... need to go into the nines yet. Oh, the nines because... are stupid. Cause, cause, Everything is stupid. Let's I only care honest. about Hero and Zero Two at this point. Like, ugh. Like, Hero and Zero Two is decent enough. But the thing with Hero and Zero Two is... Hero starts off... As... Bland. <laughs> yeah, he... <laughs> Hero starts off as the sort of character that I would use to, you know, build part of my porch. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you saying he's a pole or a plank? <laughs> I mean, both work. <laughs> but he genuinely evolved characterization. Yep. Oh. Uh, but that's not really, you know, that's, that's there, you got trigger, you, you got trigger keeping you around. You got the knowledge that there's gonna be cool fight scene. You know that trigger know what they're doing. They just like to, you know, apparently throw in weird fan service that is oddly that moment that you look at it and you go, this feels like fan service, but is it fan service? It's literally a woman holding a, a holding like a bun covered in honey. Like, is this fan service? What, why am I erect? Is this fan service? <laughs> like, what, what's... I mean, it's... And, I don't know. It's, and, it's... So, and so so you get through that part and then they decide to actually, you know, go into more characterization as, as they are to do. They do like to throw this stuff around. I mean, sake look at Yoko and Gurren Lagan. Yeah. And I th- look at look mm. at look at pretty much every every uh fucking star uniform in Kill the Kill. It's 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 genuinely just a trigger staple to have these sort of things and to also so sort of, I don't think they do it for fan service reason reasons. I think they just like to kinda push boundaries of people's expectations and what is actually acceptable in some ways. Yeah. yeah. I but, 
But the, the, they do that, and they get back to the good characterization, and they get back to all the stuff, and they get to actually make this character that was genuinely a nobody piece of shit. And this is coming from me, who put Violet Evergarden in his top five and likes Violet as a character. Like, Hero is just, like, you know, stale. And then turning him into, you know, like, slapping some Nutella and jam on there at the same time and it actually working. Well, the, uh, the they, 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 just, they just pull that out and and the relationship between him and Zero Two builds up and the genuine friction and stuff is nice and it's interesting and as much as people argued, as much as people freaked their absolute shit, as much as people wanted Ichigo to go die or, or people thought Zero Two was a monster, it was interesting and it was fun and it was a debate in the anime community that genuinely had people sparked and really involved in a series that they cared about i mean that's hmm. that's one thing the people who watch the show are very passionate about it well i i, I dare say were very were, passionate were. the um what yeah no but the thing is the the whole the whole that's why hero actually works in the sense of it, there's a reason for his character being bland at the start is because all of his character disappeared when they wiped his memory like, he had a character as a child that just all went when they wiped his memory and he just became this, like... Which is great! And it's a fantastic fucking plot point! Uh. And it genuinely makes you sit there, and if you ever rewatch it, or ever watch those episodes having known that, or whatever, I don't know how you'd come across doing something like that, then you're just, like, suddenly this bland, nothing character, you sit there and look at it and go, Oh, fuck, this is kind of sad. I don't know if I'm like the only person who's like more interested in the world and the and the backstory. I was, the... I was, I was, I was interested in the world and backstory until they fucked it up when they revealed all the world and backstory, and it was that they kind of but, destroyed it. It was weird. Like, the Zerome episode was pretty interesting. The what episode? Like, the Zerome. I can't, I can't really say his name very well. Oh yeah, that but, episode uh, was great. The episode. The, the point one. is, all the world hmm. building was great. Up until episode 19, I think it was, where they did the Dr. Frank's backstory and it just ruined mm. all the world building for me because it wasn't... It, I, I wasn't executed very well. How so? I, it's hard to explain. There is a wonderful video by Mother's Basement who <laughs> I was explains genuinely, all... genuinely just about to bring up the mother's basement thing Mother, mother's basement came out with a video explaining all of it uh of why the world building wrecked itself um and i don't really want to rehash his video well mm -hmm. basically uh, i will genuinely read the summary of it because i remember the summary being the thing that like basically was like yeah that's true uh, it, it does sum up essentially what he needs to say that we can talk on more but not really talk over what he says because if yeah. you want to see that go check out Mother's Basement's uh, Mother's Basement episode on how Darling and the Franks wrecked its world building because he'll explain it way better than we can Yeah. Uh, sometimes one bad episode can ruin an entire series of build up Darling and the Franks episode 19 manages that and then some here's why it's a train wreck and why it ruined the anime uh, well, White has him worried for the app. Yeah. It, it didn't explain anything. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, <laughs> that would spoil the video. Mm. Well, no, what I was saying was more specifically his entire thing is that one episode is the whole. It's. Okay. I mean, it's hard to. Uh, it, it's hard to, like, explain in the sense of why. Um, I think the thing that gets me with Darling and the Franks is. I feel like it's a show where they tried every single episode to stick in a shock moment and each shock moment has to be bigger than the last one. Well, it's... And it's trying too hard to do that. It's like you get into the thing and you see the entire backstory. Uh, it just raises so many questions and throws so many things. Like everything that happens in the backstory essentially makes everything the... Yeah. Fucking Popper has done the entire thing, even his internal monologue and thinking. What was 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 he genuine? Was he brain wiped? Is he lying yeah. to himself? What's the fuck the deal about that? Because that episode conflicts his entire character. 
Yeah. Also, the fact of learning what everything is, like the fact that the I think you're mis- I think you're confusing Papa. Doctor Franks and Papa are two different people. Oh, I am mixing pa- them up. Papa for it. is the big guy. Is one of the guys who sits up in the spaceship in the circle with the masks. Oh, Doctor Franks me. is the hey, old yeah, guy. Ignore me. Ignore me. Ignore me. Um. No. D- but the thing is, the thing is that one of the the the, the problem is, there's a lot of plot plot holes in that backstory of the sense of first of all ape appears right they're described as a bunch in the in the backstory ape appears they're described as a bunch of scientists from that um who come up with a bunch of ideas first of all why does nobody ever at any point ask them to take the mask off you just see these bunch of scientists who have a mask on and never take it off so you've never seen their faces and you just trust them. One. Mm. Two, they Ape suggests drilling up for magma and stuff to use as an energy source. Suddenly, the world goes to pop. Hmm, I wonder why. I wonder if it's because we're extracting magma from the planet underneath the planet's surface. I probably would have something to do with the fact that the planet's turning into a massive desert. Oh, no. I wonder whose fault that was. Ape, do they have... Like, we're just going to ignore that. Oh, they've suddenly created things called plantations, which are moving cities inside a big dome that we can all... Um, live in and survive in and somehow forget that ape caused the problem in the first place <laughs> like how are they well, still trusting these people and then how have they become into this massive power where they now control everything well, well even even above that like genuinely on the world building point Connor's on a here like let's take for a moment like so the Klaxosaurs like the Franks are Klaxosaurs right um, no, the Frank. So the way the Franks are made the is part the part Claxosaur. Doctor Franks took Claxosaurs and developed Franks's off. Okay, okay, but magma is Claxosaur. Cla- mag- magma is Claxosaur fuel as well. And like, yet, so what? Do the Claxosaurs break themselves down to make themselves? No, the cla- the Claxosaurs aren't made out of magma. If they use it as an energy source, like, they use hmm. it as an so energy what, source as well. Their own dead people as an energy source that's the, I, they haven't really said where the mag- magma is just magma i think magma is just lava they haven't really said where galaxosaurs come from they've just said that they're an ancient race that's been dormant underground and then uh, because of the magma drilling woke up but it's fine because there's the queen that's zero one well no the thing is the thing is what's the actual Klaxosaur race, so the Klaxosaur sapiens, all look like the Queen. It's just that the Klaxosaurs are um, like the Klaxosaur sapiens version of Franks's that they've built, and that's why there was the the body inside the orb is because they're pi- they're piloted by a Klaxosaur sapien pair. Well, I'm just I. Just, it's not a Klaxosaur anyone. It's just, they fucking, like, the entire world building, all of the intrigue and everything build up by people doing all of this shit, what's going on with it. You get an episode of Backstory, and in the episode of Backstory, you get spoon-fed some bullshit about Klaxosaurs being essentially beast men from Gurren Lagann, and the the giant Klaxosaur things are actually the mechs from Gurren Lagann, and then you get fed that the beast men are uh, that the Klaxosaurs are actually good, like the Beast Men in Gurren Lagann, <laughs> and then you also get told the the main professor had this love interest, and oh, the interesting thing, who's that going to turn out to be? Is it going to be some interesting intrigue thing? Is it going to be anything to do with anything in this? Is it going to lead to the he had a child with her, and then that was the first of the children that could pilot the things or anything? No, no, no. One of one of the Franks just uh, smacked its head in a wall and killed well, her. No, it's, she's basically the reason they realized that you needed another person to pilot, so you needed two people to pilot the Franks. She died, so they realized oh, that they needed two people. Boy, golly, what a yeah. great twist that they couldn't have done uh, and then and then suddenly the with. thing the thing goes he meets the Klaxosaur princess and then suddenly realizes he has a fetish for weird weird blue lollies <laughs> who rip and and he has a fetish for people ripping his arm off 
uh, suddenly becomes vastly in love with this thing and then manages, manages to rip some of her hair out, which he then uses to clone Zero Two, who at this point I assume is a clone of the Klaxosaur Princess and Dr. Franks combined. Mm. Right, right. So let's take that for a moment, and let's say what we learned from episode 19 here. So what we learn is that Klaxosaurs are riding other things called Klaxosaurs, which are run on a fuel which is made from Klaxosaurs. I don't and... think magma's made from Klaxosaurs, Ben. I think and you're kind so of just making that mag up. Magma is Klaxosaurs. <laughs> that is a point. That is a plot point of the show. Is it? Yes. <laughs> Where? Yeah, yeah, but bearing in mind, we've seen the show and you've just seen the plot from memes. <laughs> I mean, I'm fairly certain Magma is Klaxosaurs. I will Google the single line Magma is Klaxosaurs and I'm sure something will pop up. <laughs> Everything is Klaxosaurs. Uh, all right. Klaxosaurs. All right. Oh, ooh, the official. Ooh, oh, oh, the God. official wiki. Oh. Oh. The official wiki. Magma energy. Klaxosaurs seem capable of mating or merging with humans. <laughs> this is not what we wanted to do. <laughs> that, that's genuinely the line that... Yeah, that's <laughs> where the magma comes from. When Klaxosaurs mate... Okay, so magma is Klaxosaur jizz. Yeah. So they feed themselves on their own jizz, and instead of feeding themselves, this professor decided he was going to steal DNA from a lolly because he couldn't legally have sex with a monster lolly. So instead, he'd breed the child himself in a test tube of it, create it, and then basically make everyone in the world hate it because he's a piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, then use it as a, a war weapon for literally no reason. And if it was that easy to clone her, he should just clone her 800 times over and make a million other to pilot the mechs. Yeah, but you would need a bunch of humans who could pilot with her as well. He, he'd need a bunch of humans to make the DNA of. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't realize that he wasn't a... No, I mean, he needs the up, he needs the male counterpart to pilot. She couldn't just pilot on her own. Well, she kind of is, can, but not very well. She she literally can. Yeah, but... <laughs> and she... if you make, like, 70 of them... No, but... Uh, you Do you know what she looks like after she pilots on her own for too long? Hmm. The thing with the massive huge horns that touch the ceiling and sprout into huge horn trees, and she becomes... She's like a stag. Yeah... <laughs> <laughs> no, she can't. She can't. It, it does. It does take a very massive toll on her when she pilots on her own. It's not that easy. She can do it, but it's not like it's, you know. Otherwise, why doesn't the Klaxosaur princess at the end of the show, like at the in the latest episode, pilot the big massive robot on her own? She needs Hero to do it. Mm. Um. At which point, speculation for this for the future um, of of how this show's going to go. I don't think we've really hit the nail on the head at this point. I don't no. know. There's I still think... way more to reveal. I think. Yeah. I, think... I mean, let, like, like the main nail on the head as to genuinely, despite how angry I've been about the whole thing, a lot of it is due to the fact of it's easy to take the piss out of and it's memeable, and when you actually look back at it after being angry at the show, you do notice all these little faults and stuff. Yeah. But the fact that pisses me off is that it's the exact same shit that every 24-episode trigger series have pulled out of its arse every single fucking time. Yeah. Like, let's, we take this, we take Kill the Kill, We'll take Gurren Lagen. Also, You're... to clarify, because Gurren Lagen, people say Gurren Lagen's Gainax. Trigger spawned from Gainax. If you didn't know that, just because okay. I know people will like be like, but Gurren Lagen's Gainax. So, basically, you got you start off with your slightly oppressed main character, who's then forced into a situation that they don't really want to end up in, i.e. 
oh, I'm forced to escape and enter this drill thing. I'm forced to wear this clothing. I'm forced to pilot with this woman. And then things ensue, and you get some weird out-of-place fan service. You then proceed to fight some enemy that seems like a pretty decent enemy that you spend half of the show fighting against. Then later turns out that enemy was actually fighting a bigger enemy and was actually a good guy all along and was fighting against the intergalactic alien race. Yeah. So it's, then everyone must describe... team up with the original group to defeat said intergalactic alien race. And you can then... describe a lot of shows like this, though. You can describe a lot of shows like this. But well, this one kind of takes the cake for me because literally, like, they took Gurren Logan and went, how can we do Gurren it's Logan's like, story again and not I... make people say it's Gurren Logan again? Oh, I know. We'll how smash about, Evangelion into How it. about we take, yep, every bit of Gurren Logan and instead say, what would Shinji do? It's literally, it's literally. If you took Gurren Lagann and smashed Evangelion into it, is what Darling in the Franks. Is. And I love both of those shows, and I very much enjoy Darling in the Franks. However, I'm just so fucking tired of the same <laughs> old bullshit being recycled and throw down my throat like I'm some whore on the street corner that will swallow anything for 50 pounds yeah and to be honest there's, to, there's there's nothing wrong with recycling plot in a sense but you have to do something different with it in the sense of you have to make something in it that makes it interesting to watch rather than the other shows I mean, normally in the that way through i was this that's what they've done. Well, no, because the, the thing the is, the thing I is... was interested in the groups. I was in and all of that, and then they did the whole Mitsuru and Kokoro thing, and it's like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. I can even get past that. It's just uh, then that that still Hero and Zero Two are decent enough. Like, yeah, I'm invested in, but they just let everyone else die. Even Go Bro, they just let him. Like, like what's well, a lot he of done? The there's no. He just exists. The, the other characters he just don't just have any exists. points. Just exists. It's it's the thing of like, if you want to if you want to have a plot that's been done before, the way you, the the way you should counteract that is by having a bunch like a group of interesting characters. Which and, they did. Which they did, but then the other interesting characters fell by the wayside, and you focus too much on two characters who you've literally been trained to dislike. And then... As much as I'm known I... about the show, I still genuinely think it's I... good. It's just it's... I... I run because I'm sick of this exact formula being regurgitated. Mm. I, the thing I, is, like, I could you it's... stop watching at this point? Do you think you could just stop well, watching? Well, no, it? I'm going to finish because I want to know. I, I, I'm exactly. sticking with it because well, of no, Hero yeah, Zero 2. <laughs> you're, bang on. you're bang on with that, dude. Like, you're bang on. We're still, like, still watching. It's still a good show. It's Will just... it be in my top 10? No. Will it be in my top 20? No. Will it be in my top 50? Oh. Maybe. Like, it's, oh. it's, 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 it's a plot that's been done before with better characters. Like, I, I, I like the show, and for all the shitting on I've done, I will still genuinely, until it's finished and done, give it the benefit of the doubt. However, it doesn't have that many episodes left, and it's suddenly thrown things in at this point that feels like, why? To be honest, I... To me, it depends on how they wrap different storylines up. Like the problem is, I don't, I don't care what happens to half of these characters. Like I don't care if they die at the end of it. The only two characters I really care about are Hero and Zero Two. Mm -hmm. I kind of care about Goro to a certain extent because he was such a good bro in the first half of the show. But where did all that broness go? Like that bro is it, that, these, it feels <laughs> like it feels like it hit a point and just decided to give up on everyone that wasn't Kokoro, Mitsuru, 
heroes. Zero Two or Hero. Yeah. And, and Futoshi literally... became a whiny bitch, basically. And it, it literally feels like they physically dropped everyone else's character. Mm. And that's the that, that that that's the bit that genuinely like even the recycled plot I wouldn't have minded if they'd have still kept that thing that kept it fresh and all of that stuff. And it's like, yeah, I guess that like <laughs> I learned like, about the world building and stuff earlier, but let's. Uh, I, I, like, I've probably been sub, uh, like already altered by having, say, watched the Mother's Basement video and already being in a sour mood over recent recycled plot things. So those two added together probably did alter my opinion at the moment, and future episodes may change it back and switch it back to the side. Which is why, you know, I, 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 I don't know. At the moment, I feel. It just needs to be said as is. Yeah. I. The thing is, for me, I like the first... I like everything up until episode 15, I think, is great. It's well done. All of the characters get great characterization. Apart from Ikono, maybe, lacks a bit. But Zoromi gets his episode. Um, I think, okay, Twin Tail Girl, whose name I can't remember. She doesn't really get anything. But mm-hmm. I feel like she doesn't need anything. She kind of works. Um, up until episode 15 it's great I think everything after episode 15 just feels completely rushed like it could have it could have needed a couple of episodes more to breathe maybe if they spent more time doing those the slice of life episodes when they're on their own to just feel like there's a bit more gaps in between that Kokoro and Mitsuru relationship development because I know yes it there's time skips that happen there which if you kind of kind of explain to yourself why the time that the time sits in there you kind of understand that okay yes no yes that kind of de- relationship could develop over a month but it doesn't feel like a month to the average viewer because it's just three episodes so if they put an, a couple of episodes in between there where they'd done character development for other characters and kept the other characters relevant but then again, would you have said at that point that that was too know, much slice just, of life and not yeah that was too much slice of life? Well, the thing is, they That's, went that felt like just filler. Well, the thing mm. is, what they should have the, the thing is the thing that's I d- the thing is the, pl- the the direction that they took the plot after episode fifteen they they dug themselves into a hole where they stuck themselves into a situation where the only thing that can come after that is the final confrontation where and they wanted to put in the coco literally i feel like the only reason those three episodes exist those three slice of life episodes exist the only reason they exist is to put in the kokoro and mitsuru thing like that's the only reason those things exist is to put in the kokoro and mitsuru thing for them to have a baby for them to get married for them to then get pulled away and have their memory wiped so the so the so the the party the for the squad to have a reason to hate ape and to want to go against them. That's the only reason those three episodes exist. Is because a plot point that needed to happen. Yeah. And those three episodes that, are for really. a Kokoro Mitsuru plot point of memory wipe. That's so the, the problem. position now because I'm kind of on both sides here. <laughs> 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 and, and and despite, being the one, despite being the one that's genuinely really shat on this the most during this whole thing, I am... Um, on both sides of this, hmm. like I, I, I see a problem, but the problem is mainly my own problem and thoughts on this of the whole same recycled stuff and feeling that certain points have pissed me off about the show, which is why I feel that the spoiler cast at this point is quite all right because, quite frankly, it'd be nice to be able to turn around in like four weeks time and say yeah the ending was fantastic genuinely they did turn it around it all made sense uh despite everything i said i still think it's a fantastic show great when it's over and be able to say that in a future podcast Mm. like i'd love nothing more to be able to turn around and say that but at the same time i feel this is the pinnacle of discussion about the show and that's why i feel like this is a good thing to talk about now yeah, because this does seem to be the moment that has gone either you know, blay or yay, <laughs> and I'm kind of you know just sat here in the middle ground of 
I'm pissed off from some decisions and some things I didn't think made sense. But even when you look at it, it's like even the Mitsuru and Kokoro thing, like, it does make sense that they find each other because they are the misfits of the group almost, the ones that don't fit with anyone else. So naturally, they'd gravitate to each other. Uh, but, but even my... so, it, it's like the fact that we can have such a heated discussion over a simple two people exactly. deciding to bang each other, is that not the sign of a good show? Yeah, and so it's conflict, and so it's emotion in the viewers. Yeah. Is, like... that, is that literally not the sign of a good show? And so, you know, I know, I feel actually talking about it and ranting about it and memeing about it has made me see it more the... Mm. Actually, getting it off my chest has actually made me just sit there and go like, yeah, actually, you know what? It's fine, because I never... Like, I've rewatched Gurren Logan and I know what happened. I never had that, because you got the hype-as-fuck moments, you got the emotional moments, and you got the moments that make you laugh, and you got the, the bits that get you invested and on the edge of your seat, and the bits that spark discussion with everyone. Like, mm. you know, was was Lorginum actually doing anything that was wrong in the end? Like, was his trapping everyone underground actually a decent decision or not and big arguments over that stuff isn't just I mean, this fucking Kokoro and Mitsuru the exact same thing I mean this whole little section being dedicated to just Darling and the Franks just kind of says a lot yeah yeah doesn't that say more than than I, even, even if most of it's been ranting like I am genuine the term of this coming around to the fact of this show has clearly actually meant more than a bunch of other shit, like, obviously the stuff that I would infinitely rate above, like, you know, as, as I said previously, like, uh, uh, Megalobox, Tada, and uh, Hina Matsuri are my top three for this season, and two of the, th uh, like, two of the three, fucking three of the, three genuinely fantastic, it was some of the best I've seen in, like, recent years. But, like, this is still sparking discussion, it's still sparking interest, but I still want to see what happens with it, and that's I, a, that's I a good show. I think this, to be honest, I, the, the comparison I always pull with what this show's done this season is very similar to what ReZero did two years ago. Like, just as the way the communities reacted to it. In the sense of, uh, Rizzo did it everyone, slightly differently. Everyone absolutely went mental over I Love Amelia. Yeah. I mean, this this show is kind of like the I Love Amelia intensified over several episodes. Rather than just one. But the thing is, people still love ReZero. But the thing is, I would still... I still... Um, and we'll probably talk about Isekai on a podcast at some point. It, to me, two years on... ReZero I still love as a show. I still like ReZero a lot. Um, whereas this, two years on, I don't think I will have the same thing as I had with ReZero. Of course, I... This... I don't know. Like, I think a lot of my opinions are, on this show are based purely a lot on the fact of how much I hate Mitsuru. <laughs> um, because I literally, I literally hate that guy. Like, I, 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 I. To be honest, I won't be happy unless he dies at the end of this show. Like, <laughs> he needs to die. Like, if he dies, then it's fine. But, um, I, I just don't like the guy. He's just, I don't like the way that they've just. I don't like the thing of like, you have literally made us hate this character, and now you're expecting us to like him, even though he's best girl. Oh, what are you talking like, about? To be dude? honest, I would have preferred <laughs> if they'd gone down the route of he rejects Kokoro because he's gay. Like, why hmm. didn't they do that? Like, why they could have done that? They made a lesbian character. Why not make a gay character? Like, because that was too easy. Like, I, it's just, I, I, I don't get it. It's it's weird. And also, I don't understand why Kokoro falls in love with him in the, in the first place. Like, what, what? Like, okay, you get a couple of scenes with them in the weird greenhouse thing. But to me, that's more of like, oh, she's... To be honest, it's almost like she just gets with him to have a baby. 
Like that's what it feels I mean, like. To me. I mean, I mean, two I points. She regard. actually does because she's just having that. She, all she instinct. cares. She doesn't actually love him. She just wants a baby. She doesn't to care be fair, about it. That, that, that's quite an interesting point of the show because I, I like I genuinely kind of talked myself into a bit. Those two are kind of the massive outcasts of this group of already outcasts, and it makes sense that they gravitate together but is she literally only choosing him because he's the one that wouldn't matter to anyone else if she turned and said have a baby and i need to have a baby i i i, I like is honest, it any me, it's in a storm. Like... but then again this th then again you do have this thing of i think she does have feelings for him in the sense of um they wouldn't have done the wedding if they, they wouldn't have done the wedding i tell myself but um... but on a on, on a greater note anyway Mitsuru's best girl, you're clearly wrong. Anytime you have to say best anything, the answer is always Goro. Oh, uh, yes. Goro is insanely just, uh, best, bro. A final round of applause for Goro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's just. One more final round of applause for Goro there. <laughs> Congratulations, Goro. <laughs> Good job. Oh god! No, anyway, no. The show needs to just end with the scene where Goro's just in a white space, where every all the other characters are around him. Going, Congratulations, Goro. Oh, thank God you didn't go to a hospital scene. Oh, no, that would that would be Ichigo over mm. Hero's dead body. Wow, man, I genuinely this discussion has been nice because Connor's actually brought me around to actually really having a positive outlook on the show again and <laughs> thinking that it might end with me going that was really good on the show. Yeah, I feel like the problem is I've also always had an issue with trigger shows. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't know what it is, but trigger for some reason, trigger and Gynax. I, Does I, it trigger you? I, I, I always have a weird issue really? with them. Like, I don't know what it is. I just, I, there's always something that tees me off with them. Man, I like, I like the way that this discussion went. Of just literally started off with heavy heavy memes with no care for anything then went into genuine angry discussion and then went into genuine you know what actually i've come around for this it, it was genuinely like that one drunk guy in the party that sits there for a minute having a great laugh making everyone laugh their ass out and then just suddenly part way through the night sits down starts crying and saying, you know, oh, I've ruined my life, everything's terrible, fuck's sake, what am I going to do? What am I going to do next? And then ten minutes later, he stood up, because one mate put his hand on the shoulder and went, it'll be all right, and he's like, yeah, you know what, actually, it will be, let's dance, woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. yeah, what I... a fucking pointless spoiler cast this was. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it pointless, mate? <laughs> Please explain. <laughs> I love how this spoiler cast has gone on for an hour. Mm. I mean, to be honest, actually, yeah, like you said, the fact that this is now, we've, we've been discussing this for an hour, it's just a testament to it. Like, a show can do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It doesn't necessarily say it's good or bad, but it just says it's it's kind of important yeah. to people. I don't, I don't know what it says about me when I say... A, when I say my favorite guy next trigger show is is panty and stocking, I don't know, I that probably says more about me than anything. Else. A lot, a lot of people love panty and stocking, man. It's a funny show. Um, like honestly, if I had to name my favorite guy next a trigger show, it's probably Inferno Cop. Mm. Okay. That <laughs> silence means that neither of you. I have no. Is. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. <laughs> It's literally a show that's like five minutes per episode. They put uh, the entire thing on YouTube, and it's beautiful. It's just this cop that's just a burning red skull in a police officer's uniform. And you get such amazing moments in it, such as he fires a bullet at a lobster with a baby's head. And it just goes, ha-ha, I'm immune to bullets. And then it bounces back at Inferno Cop, and then he goes, Haha, so am I. It bounces off of Inferno Cop, the baby goes, Oh no, and then blows up. <laughs> well, has anybody got any last minute points they would like to make about Darling and the Franks? Otherwise, we will wrap this up, I think.
Yeah, go watch Inferno Cop. It's like <laughs> twenty minutes. For the... It's like twenty-five minutes for the whole fucking series. Go watch it. It's on YouTube. And yeah, well, I'm I'm just gonna say, despite of what I've been saying, I've still I still enjoy I'm still enjoyed the show and I'm enjoying it to a certain extent, and I will finish it. Mm. Um, the ending will probably change my opinion of it, good or bad. Um, mm -hmm. I specifically didn't watch the. I watched the first because they they were releasing these weird like specials where they had interviews with the cast and director and writer and whatever. I watched the first one. I specifically not watched the second one in case they kind of tease stuff. Um, because I don't want to know anything near the ending of how this is going to end. Because I still have no clue. Yeah. Um, Man, I, just I, really I, I still I think the only person who's probably safe from death is Kokoro because otherwise what's the point in her being pregnant well so she can die during pregnancy of course yeah but the show so... won't last that long like she's not gonna not, the show's not gonna last time wise Dude, are, you, nine are you telling me that the next episode isn't gonna have a 10 year time skip because it's just building up to the loss meme That's what's going on. it's uh, you know, yes. the, literally the next episode is gonna start with her with a huge belly mmm I mean, to be oh, honest, yeah. it was already like I'm already like okay, wait. They had they slept together like uh, three episodes ago, and she's now got morning sickness. Does that really happen that quickly? I can't wait for the start. I don't know. It's a few weeks. Yeah, uh, no, it's well, been a few weeks. It's fine. No, yeah. it, it it can be like a few days. I don't think it works that quickly, Ben. Oh, all right. If you say so, Miss. Morning sickness. <laughs> uh, honestly, I just look forward to the next podcast that will genuinely have part way through inevitably one of us bringing this up and either oh my god that was that was fucking trash that was fucking awful ending or whoa my dick still hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the inevitable outcome. In the meantime, I'm just going to sit here still smiling to Hina Matsuri as the only light that my life will ever see. And... Uh, on that note... Why, why am I so self-deprecating in this podcast? Let's, let's, let, we can, let, let's just end the podcast. I mean, we can always continue talking about crap after we've ended it. No, uh, we can't. That breaks the illusion. We never speak to each other outside of these. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Mm, uh, secrets. Anyway, so thanks everybody for listening to the first spoiler cast uh, about Darling the Franks. Hopefully you have seen the show <laughs> before listening to this. Because if you if haven't... If not, I hope you enjoyed our bullshit rant about... Yeah. The yeah, or maybe you've just been following the show by looking at memes every week. Ah, uh, yeah, to be fair, you, that's that's a decent way of doing that's it. That's a decent I'd way of doing it. to watch the show. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... Thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you for listening, and we shall see you next time. Be gone, thoughts! <laughs>